now we'll talk about some of the specific products that come out, the actual natural gas liquids themselves. And these are hydrocarbon liquids derived from natural gas through the processes that we spoke about. You've got ethane, which is C2H6, propane C3H8, butane C4H10. Isobutane is an isomer of butane, IC4. Uh, the pentanes are what we call C5 pluses, that's C5H12. Natural gas leans, some of them are C5s and some are C6 through C9. And then condensate is C6 plus. Again, condensate is a very, very light type of oil and it is marketed in the oil markets. Again, as we talked about, we got to remove them from the gas uh, from the gas stream itself because they're vol volatile components. But a lot of these then are converted into chemical feedstocks. Some are used as gasoline blending components. The raw stream coming from most processing plants um, has to be processed into Y grade. Uh, y grade is a uh, composite of all the NGLs um, that makes it easier to ship it either by pipeline or for trucks. Then when they arrive at a fractionation facility, that's where they're separated into so-called purity products. And a purity product would contain at least 90% composition of the single natural gas liquid. So for instance, when I talked about purity uh, propane, that would be the liquid would be at least 90% propane. The types of NGLs that we have, probably one of the most common ones that we do know is propane. Um, it's approximately 40% of the overall NGL market it is mostly used for home heating and cooking, but it is also largely used as a chemical feedstock. You can take propane and you make propylene, which is a um, base chemical for plastics. The primary markets for propane are the Gulf Coast petrochemical facilities. Again, the Gulf Coast is the world's largest refining and petrochemical corridor in the, in the, uh, in the world. Uh, Mont Bellevue, Texas is a large complex east of Houston. Um, it is a huge fractionation facility. Um, there's deliveries to and from the plant. It's a trading point. Uh, there's storage there, both above ground and underground. And there's a global market. There are actually NGLs that are exported from this area. There is a secondary market in the mid continent It's in Conway, Kansas. Again, this is a much, much smaller plant than Mont Bellevue, but they have fractionation towers. Um, there is NGL takeaway and delivery. There is storage there. Uh, it is a trading point, and there happens to be a petrochemical uh, refining plant adjacent to the uh, Conway NGL fractionation plant. And of course, they do have pipelines that can move southbound to Mont Bellevue. So additional NGLs can make their way down to Mont Bellevue. Ethane is about 25% of the natural gas liquids market. It is primarily used as a chemical feedstock for ethylene and propylene. Again, those are base chemicals used in the manufacture of uh, plastics. Now, it's rarely used as a fuel source. It can be left in the gas stream uh, as methane. We refer to this as ethane rejection. If ethane prices are low, but natural gas prices are fairly strong, then the ethane is left in the natural gas stream, which raises the overall BTU content for the stream. And of course, this is highly price dependent. Sometimes in the middle of winter, the actual price of the natural gas on a BTU basis far exceeds that of selling the ethane in liquid form. And so you'll find processing plants go into what they call ethane rejection. That means is they don't want the ethane, they leave it in the natural gas stream. Same market hubs as the other NGLs, Mont Bellevue and Conway, Texas. If you hear the term EP mix in the natural gas liquids industry, that means that it's 80% ethane and 20% propane. And that is strictly used for ethylene production. Butane or N-butane, because now we're talking about normal butane. 85% of the butane is used for gasoline blending. Now, we talk about RVP. Okay, In the wintertime, butane is used to stabilize the RVP. RVP is the reed vapor pressure. Now, that's a measurement of the ability for gasoline to vaporize at atmospheric pressure. Um, anytime you know, that you are filling your car up, if you see fumes coming back up out of the tank while you're filling it, Okay, that's, that's uh, a measure of RVP. You, you've got vapor there. Um, several states in the United States have those vapor recovery nozzles, those uh, plastic things that are over the gas. Load. The idea is that you want to recover as much vapor as possible because, number one, um, they do condense and they are gasoline. Number two, they are a form of pollution when they just go to the air. Um, we talked about the refining process. Butane is used as a cracking component when we talked about cracking portion of a uh, refinery process. Um, a lot of us know about uh, lighter fluid, meaning butane is used in, in lighters. 
It's also a propellant in aerosol sprays. It can be used for household cooking and bottled gas. And it's also refrigerant. Um, it is a refrigerant that can be used at the processing plants to chill the natural gas. It is also refrigerant used in um, air conditioning systems in motor vehicles. And this is isobutane, which is an isomer of butane, also known as methyl propane. Um, it has similar uses to butane. Gasoline blending, it's a chemical feedstock. Uh, again, it's also used as a refrigerant in automobiles for the air conditioning systems, and it's known as R600A. And it's also known as isooctane. This is an anti-knock gasoline additive. Um, if you've ever had the situation with knocking your car, uh, seems like it's starting to stall and it bangs really hard and then it shuts down. Um, this helps to stabilize the gasoline so that those things do not happen because they can be very damaging um, to the engine. Uh, NGLs, the next group of natural gasolines, C5 pluses are considered natural gasolines. They are literally, um, you're literally able to burn those as natural gasoline. So these are also used for gasoline blending. Now they're used to stabilize the RVP mostly in the summertime. They can be used for ethylene production. They are used as industrial solvents. They're also uh, an ethanol denaturant. You know, if you think about ethanol, the vast majority of ethanol is produced from corn, and it's a form of alcohol. So it literally is corn liquor. Um, it could be, you know, you could drink it as an alcohol. So to discourage people from doing that and to prevent the sale of it as that, um, basically they have to add a little bit of natural gasoline to it. So in essence, it, it becomes um, lethal and it certainly tastes bad. Um, it's also known as a, as a it's used as a, a crude diluent. That means it can be used to dilute crude. For instance, in the um, western provinces, especially um, in Alberta, Canada, you have the tar sands oil, which is also known as bitumen, and it's extremely thick. And so they can take um, the natural gasolines and they can blend those or add them to the thick crude, which makes it a bit thinner, which allows it to more easily ship in the pipelines. Uh, and again, the, the biggest market hub for um, natural gasolines is Mont Bellevue, Texas. Pricing-wise, you can see this is just a comparison of the natural gas liquids, which tend to run in sync with things like natural gasoline and crude oil. And here you can see just basically, again, another trend where you've got um, spot prices for natural gas liquids uh, compared to Brent crude. Uh, Mont Bellevue propane, you can see that that's in here, and then of course natural gas. Now, this last slide I want to show you has to do with the fact that you can see the spike of mostly propane. I mean, this is propane spot pricing. And you can see the winter of 2013 2014, um, there was a huge spike, specifically at Conway, Kansas. Now, this didn't necessarily have to do with the amount of propane, it had to do with the deliverability. We couldn't get the propane to the markets that needed the most, and that was in the upper Midwest. Um, you can see this past winter, 2014-2015, there was not the same type of spikes in Kansas or at Mont Bellevue. And then lastly, I've got a slide here that sort of um, kind of gives you an appreciation of the value of natural gas um, when you add in the revenue from the liquids. Uh, a lot of people want to know, you know, why do producers continue to sell natural gas, you know, above or below three dollars, how is it possibly economical? Well, if you're also extracting natural gasolines, then you've got a considerable amount um, of revenue there that's possible. So you can kind of see uh, as you move across this um, spreadsheet and you get over to the liquid price per MMBTU, it is considerable. Um, and then we talk about the, the spreads that the um, uh, midstream or processing companies get. And you can see this particular example, the total stream was worth about $3.20. The gas that it cost them to, to basically uh, run the plant was two sixty-five. So their crack spread becomes $0.55 cents per MMBTU, which is a, a pretty healthy spread.